That's what his mouth do. But see, Jonah knew this. Jonah knew that if the Ninevites repented, God would relent the punishment and forgive them. And he didn't want that to happen. You know, you know and when you think about it. He probably thought they wouldn't really believe him. You know what I mean? They, all right, I'm sure he did. Jonah thought that. You know, I'm going to go over there and tell them all this stuff, and you're going to forgive them. And they're going to think I was a liar. You know, or I didn't. I That's a good thought. She said she thinks that maybe, I don't know if y'all could hear her or not. She was thinking that maybe Jonah was thinking, if I go tell them all this and you do this, then they're going to look at me and think I'm a liar. Well, in essence, yes. That's very true. They're going to look at him and say, look, uh, you come, you're bringing us this damnation. You're bringing us this punishment. And now we're going to be forgiven. Yeah, see, yeah. Well, it's sort of like, like I told you before, I had an uncle that says, I can do anything I want to as long as I confess before I die. We know when that is. That's yeah, but see, we don't know that, all right? And, and so here we are when you look at this. So John concluded that the mercy of God was those who are, are uh, going to uh, really and truly, um, they, were, they were really not really involved with what was going on around them. So God was saying, clean up your act. And so Jeremy learned in all of this, I think he already knew God about God's mercy, but he really learned about God's mercy in this venture that he was on. For he was, you know, his uh, reluctance to proclaim judgment was, if you look at the, look at the fourth chapter, the second verse, what does it say? Second, fourth chapter, second verse. Second verse. Um, he prayed to the Lord. I'll share that. Yeah. Not now. He, he prayed, prayed to the Lord. Lord and said, "O oh Lord, is this, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and." Abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. My question is if Jonah knew all of this, why did he do it? He, he, why did he go? Why did he go? Well, well he got spit out by yeah. our family. I know, he but still, go, but he got spit up on the land. <laughs> he still did not have to go to Nineveh. I think he probably thought he did. Well, I think if I'd gone through that, I would have too. But, <laughs> yeah, okay. but when you look at this and think, uh, you know. Uh, the thing of it is, don't you think, too, that how awful the Syrians had been to the Israelites that he was afraid of them? Well, I'm sure he was. Well, but he all, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was thinking, too, that he did not trust them if God forgave them and said, you're okay, that they still would be mean to the Israelites. They but that's, really that was, that. yeah, you're right. He would, he, that's why he said, they'll come back and plunder us again mm -hmm. and all that. But one of the things that realizes, and your author was saying this about it, have you ever had a close encounter with death? Yes. Did you rethink your attitude about life? Yes. <laughs> At least for a good amount of time. <laughs> so, but that, with, do you, you don't think Jonah was going through three days in the three nights in the belly of the whale? Yeah. You don't think he was saying, you know, really, yeah. this is a close encounter. Yeah, I think And so. this is beyond the cl a close encounter of the third kind. This yes. is <laughs> bad encounter. And so, so we're there. So he, you think he really knew he where he was then? Well, I think he did. I mean, he had to. Uh, I don't know if I'd have known where I was. <laughs> I mean, it's dark. I'm sure you. It was, I don't think there was any lights in there. He didn't have any kind of. He didn't have his cell phone with him with a light that he could put on. He really him. expected to die. Yeah, well, yeah, that's, probably, that's what that's what he thought was going to happen. That's what I thought too. But let me. He, he expected to die, but was he afraid to die? No, it was a very yeah, <laughs> He wasn't. Was I think he'd rather die than they want. Well, that's what he told God. I'd rather dead. be dead than go over to the. Yeah. And, yeah. and take this they to the Nineveh. They might have, you know, done terrible things to him before yeah. he died. You know, yeah. sometimes it's But smart. he did it by the directive of the Lord. He finally did. And he <laughs> responded to, to God's command. And he took that message, which is the whole story, yeah. to him. 
And so he was able to respond to God in ways that I hope that we can, all right, when we think about it. Yeah. And when, when you get to thinking about, you know, the greater uh, Nineveh to the proclamations of the imminent dome, uh, uh, doom that brought on by Jonah, how many times have we heard in our lifetime from televangelists or from revivals. Some of I remember one pastor preaching on the ugliest picture in the Bible that he preached on on the crucifixion, but it was all scary type of theology. You know, do you do you think Jonah's message was scary, or was it was it uplifting? Well, when I got to the end of it, I think it was uplifting. The when you got to the end of it, it wasn't uplifting, yes. But and that's where, that's where we are looking at it. When you know what, when you deal with the pop, the populace of, of Nineveh, they wound up believing. Right? We look at the the king of believe of Nineveh. He got on sackcloth and he did it. Uh, you know, and when you think of it, you know, I, I love what the question asks is: Do you think God's nature? required him to be merciful to the residents of greater Nineveh or was he his decision to spare them an act he would have left undone without calling his mercy into question? What did you answer on that? Did you answer it? Or did you look over it down on the bottom of page 86? That's it. <clears throat> the king? Yeah. No, the very bottom question. Do you think okay. God's nature required him to be merciful to the residents of Greater Nineveh, or was his decision to spare them an act he would have left undone without calling his mercy into question? What do you think? I know. I know. All right, you say I know. Okay, God go. God knows everything. Yes, he does. And he knows knew what was going to happen. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So I just think that. So what yeah. you're saying is, it was definitely his nature yeah. to be that, rather than making it a spur of the moment type yeah, of mercy. I think it was a spur of the moment. You agree with that? I don't get anything from my <laughs> pictures over here. They are all looking. But what do you think about it? Was Jonah's faith alive? Was his faith alive? But was was that was that faith praying or was that Jonah on a close encounter with death asking to get removed from this? Let me out of here. I won't ever do this again. All right. Well, his faith was being tested. Well, yes, his faith was being tested. I agree with you, and it, that's part of it. But when you realize that, uh, would you think as the, as the author did? How do missionaries go into another culture? Most of the time when we used to have a strong missionary ministry within the church, you had to go to school to learn the language of the country you were going into, all of its culture and all of its mores. And, and, and so you had to be aware of that going in up front. Now, whether to do it that way today or not, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure what's, but that was part of it. Uh, and, and that was where you had to learn the culture. I read about an individual who uh, uh, his family were Lutheran. They were from Germany, never lived in Germany. They were missionaries in Japan before the Second World War. And how his family had to learn. You know, he said, I never went, back. even as a teenager, I only visited my home country of Germany on occasion. So they had to get into it. You had to really understand all of that. So my question is, how did Jonah, other than by the grace and direction of God, know how to address the Ninevites? He didn't know their culture, right? No. Mm -mm. I mean, so, like, so he could. I never thought of that. Me either. <laughs> but he didn't want Nineveh to survive. No. He didn't want it to be an instrument of judgment in the hand of God against those that were spiritually 
rebellious in his own country. In other words, he didn't right, want that. Nineveh, even like the Assyrians, period. No, <laughs> he didn't. When you look at that, knowing God's ways in all of this, but in this part, there was. Um, I'm trying to find where I wrote down about some of the things about efforts of what they were going through, uh, keeping it alive, and how God extended his mercy uh, to Jonah through the three things he prepared him for. Do you remember those three things? One of them was the fish, all right? And the other one was the, the plant, all right? He had the plant to keep him shade. And so we look at those and, you know, when you realize that Jonah is really a messenger. And he brought a story and a message there in all of this. Well, I was wondering about all of this as we get closer to the end. Because he was screaming and yelling about the Ninevites not repenting. He was adamant about it. He was having all sorts of issues with it. And one of the things that was important to us was that did they repent? What do you what do you call it when you don't repent? Or when you repent and, and then go back to your old ways? What do we call it? Backslide. Backslide. <laughs> but the question is, did they repent? The history books has no say on it. You know, fine. The Bible evidence of it, you go back and read 1st and 2nd Samuel, Kings, Chronicle, uh, uh, Chronicles, um, uh, Nehemiah, you can read Ezra, you can read Esther, and none of those sources show any of the things that they may have wound up doing, or having repentance. Uh, even as I told you, there was even, they went back and read and checked in the Babylonian Chronicle. Right, now that's a long that's a long time ago because this chronicle would record Nineveh's was destroyed, recorded that it was destroyed in six twelve. Yeah. All right, but in one hundred four, uh, Xenophon, who was retreating, a Greek army passed through the ruins of Nineveh, the great city, was already an unrecognizable mass of debris. But this was four, this was two hundred years later. So, if they didn't repent, what did God do? Destroyed them. <laughs> I don't think the story is about you. But no, it isn't. Jonah. <laughs> but it's, yeah. it, it's about Jonah. It's about them. But it's also about us. Yeah. It's about how do we repent? Sometimes. <laughs> when you look at this, and, and this is what Jonah is saying to us today, are we as bullheaded as the Ninevites. A lot of times. <laughs> yeah. Are we to the point of just going against everything God is for and, and, and we don't do it? You know, when you think about the plant, you think about the worm, you think about the oppressive sun that's there, how many things get in our way of staying focused on God? Okay. And he, he recorded three things that were that was given to him by God and he didn't take care of them. And then when you look at that, so what do you what do you think about it when, when you look at that? So it, I, I went Goldie, it's not the story is really not about the Ninevites, but it is about Jonah and Jonah what he does. Can you put yourself in Jonah's place? But you see, he came from a country, Israel. That failed to repent. Yeah. When you go back and read, the, uh, you go back and read the Old Testament. They, you know, the fall of Israel in 721 BC and Judah in 587 BC. To guess who? The Assyrians. Yeah. All right, and and Babylon. Babylon came in too. They were part of that. So when you look at this, I, I love what he said. Think about this as our downfall, Israel's downfall. Israel knew God. Israel had a covenant. You and I know God. You and I have a covenant, right? Right. Okay. The Lord warned Israel and Judah by every prophet and every seer, saying, Turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments 
and my statutes in accordance with all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets, but they would not listen, but were stubborn as their fathers had been who did not believe in the Lord their God. And this comes from 2 Kings, all right? When you're looking at this, Nineveh, immediate and wholesale repentance on hearing the word makes a striking contrast to that, though, doesn't it? Because Jonah tells us they did what? They repented. They repented. And what does the very last verse say? But the Lord said, you have been, well, it wasn't the last one, the last couple. You have been concerned about this plan, though you did not tend it. Oh, that really gets to us, doesn't yeah. it? Now, do you think he's talking about the church when he says the plan? Yeah, I think so. Oh, different kind of plan, but anyway. And he goes on to say, uh, he intended to, or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are some, I couldn't believe the size of the city, more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals. Why did he throw that last word in there? Telling us what? <laughs> Telling us what? That's right. That they were there was their prosperous and that was their wealth. But where did the animals come from? They were a creation of God. And God says they have all of this. They haven't taken care of it. Then they profited by it. All right. So we look at that and realize it. So the Book of Jonah. It's not only a message to Nineveh, but it's a message to Israel, and then today it's a message to us. And think about it. Uh, sometimes we become scandalous and think about having to repent. You know, and he talked about Jerusalem being a great city, but which failed to repent as well. And when we consider all of this, it boils down to the fact that we're here today because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And fortunately for people like Peter and Paul and the other apostles have all the rest. And he goes on to say, I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but it is not enlightened. For being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. And that's what was happening to them in, as he wrote about it, in Romans, the 10th chapter, Paul was talking about what was happening in his time. Same thing Jonah was talking about in his time. When you look at this, and when you go and try to find all the answers. I'm going to close today with a, with a poem that I think is beautiful. And listen to it. And it's titled, You, Why Told You. Where I wonder, you, exclamation point. Where I ponder, you, exclamation point. Only you, you again, always you. Sounds like Jonah, right? <laughs> you, you, you. When I'm glad, you. When I'm sad, you. Only you, you again, always you. You, you, you. Sky is you. Earth is you, you above, you below, in every trend, at every end, only you, you again, always you, 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 you. Now, it was a good Jewish guy that wrote that, but when you think about it, don't you think that's where Jonah was in the midst of all this? Like, it's you, and that's where we are today. It is him. It is that. And that's what we heard. Thoughts? Come on, go back at me. What about you? Any of you on the on the screen? What are your thoughts about? What did you think of Jonah? Did you enjoy Jonah? Yeah. I always just thought of Jonah as the story of blah, 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 blah. 
it wasn't really saying anything to me, you know, but I definitely felt more like this is covered up. God was giving him a second chance. Well, when you think about it, how would the book of Jonah play out in our society today? Oh, get laughed at. Get laughed at? Laugh at? <laughs> You're probably right, Kathy Sue. We would, there are a lot of people. Because there's a lot of people today that look at us like we're a bunch of nincompoops. You know, you, you've got to depend on a God. What are you telling me? You know, and so there are a lot of folks out there that are anti. Uh, and yes, it's sort of like I had a guy tell me one time, I would join church, but you're full of hypocrites. <laughs> and I said, well, come on, one more is not going to hurt. <laughs> so when we think about it, Jonah to me has, has had a great touch for us. And so I find a lot of wonderful stories. And did my little blurbs I sent out during the week inspire you to read any more of it that I was throwing out? I was hoping to give you some things to think about on it. So I will try to do that. Guess who are we getting ready to start next week? Micah. You were gonna say what? Well, I, you know, again, I'm also good, so I was trying to read find something great. I want to read it. And uh, one, there was one thing that compared Jonah with Jesus. Yep. Jesus because, compared himself to Jonah. Okay. Well, the comparison in this that I read, we just, you know, I don't know what to make that, but anyway, was that Jonah, you know, he went to the whale. Right. Like a Joy was saying, like, my gosh, that must have been horrible. It almost like this, you know. He really went through a terrible time. But Jesus went the full way. Oh, yeah. Jesus, you know, was, I mean, he was gone, dead, but of course, God raised him up so that, the, you know, the, the comparison was not just, you know, apples to apples at all. Right. Uh, wasn't the same degree of torture, although it does sound awful to have been in the belly of this big whale with all that stuff coming out. Well, and it's <laughs> I true. Thought that was interesting. But there's two places in, in the New Testament, and one's in Luke, the 11th chapter, and the other one's in Matthew, the 12th chapter, where God talks about the sign of Jonah. But did you, what do you know about your your Jewish friends? Do you know anything about Yom Kippur? The Day of Atonement? Yeah. Do you know what the Day of Atonement, you know what they start the Day of Atonement with? They start reading from the book of Jonah. Oh. It's from the very beginning. And for centuries, the book of Jonah has been read on the Day of Atonement in the Jewish faith uh, for Yom Kippur. Uh, and, and, and that is the most solemn fast days of the Jewish uh, liturgical year. And where its origins go back eons. And so it's part of there. And their very final thing is, is, what shall it be? What form will it take? Talking about their lives from that day of atonement. Uh, let us repair what can still be repaired. Let us give back the gain we earned by injustice. Let us make peace with our injured brother. Let us restore the person who wrong, we wronged. Let us admit that what is false in ourselves, oh boy, that could have gets to us, doesn't it? Uh, let us put right what is wrong in our family life. This is what they pray on the Day of Atonement. And let us not sour the joy of living. May God give us the courage to do these things and help us to rebuild our lives. And when we have finished our task, May he permit us to enjoy the light shown, sown, like scattering it, on the righteous so that he can delight in us. The gates of his mercy are still open. Let us enter in. Wow. Didn't realize Jonah cared that much weight, didn't he? Yeah. So that's interesting. Well, you know, it kind of seems to me the story of Jonah is kind of showing the extent God will go to 
to give us the opportunity to do the right thing. And oftentimes in our own life, something that seems so tragic at the time may turn your whole life around. And you didn't want it that way, but in the end, it was what was best for you. And mm -hmm. don't yeah. you think that that yeah, could be? It's, I agree. And the compassion that God has for sinners. <laughs> yeah. but, but see, that's, that's another word that you and I are putting into the vocabulary of the world. Because before God or before Christ, there was no compassion. That wasn't in the vocabulary. I mean, do you go back and read history and see what they did to each other? Well, the whole Old Testament yeah, is so violent. I mean, you don't, you don't have to read the Old Testament. Go back and read history. Yeah. You can just... And then you look at... The, they, they went, well, where was the compassion? Where was the mercy? Where was the love? It was out for everything. He could have just as easily said, oh, well, Jonah's not going to do it. I'll find somebody else. Yeah. So well, then you, look, be on with you, me. you looked at Jonah taking us through different cultures. But guess what we're getting ready to go into with Micah? We're getting ready, you know, to the truth of the majesty of God. Uh, his majesty. You know. about that. Majesty. <laughs> hey, folks, have a great one. Be in touch. Daddy Sue, good seeing you. Yeah. You seen Tony lately? No, I talked to him last week. I mean, by email, but that's, I have heard from him since then. Okay, though. No. Keep me posted. Take care. Bye bye. He did it. He did it. I said, we did it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did. You did a great one. But I hope that you're enjoying this. I, I, I wish I could get you. To spend the hours into it, I do because it becomes an enjoyment to me. But when I get into Bible studies, guess what?